Yeah, so so tell us more about like the podcast and like kind of what because you know those are three very broad topics. Like what what's the what's the episodes kind of look like? What do you go into? Uh, generally, I have a little bit of introduction, things going on in my life, so that people feel like they know who I am, which is always kind of spooky because sometimes people remember what I said better than I did. Mm, yeah, I I know that feeling. Yeah, I know I, that feeling. Uh, just listener, as an FYI, never quote somebody to that person. It's just weird well that it's like so i this is a live show i speak for an hour and a half every week i don't remember the shit i said gone. a month ago it's or whatever gone, yeah. like unless i'm watching it which i do you know i check on the episodes yeah. and stuff but it's like a year ago i don't remember what i fucking said it could be fucking crazy shit i don't know yeah so, so i'll have the intro which is about me or could be about politics often i'll have one or two segments about uh, investments or finance or the economy coronavirus, anything I want to talk about, and then uh, often have a long-form interview, which could be 20 to 60 minutes. Mm. Uh, someone who may be in the secular movement, a humanist, an atheist, maybe someone who wrote a book, but sometimes it's a scientist or a, uh, someone who wrote a book about sociology or just any random thing I want. I had on a guy that wrote a book about the Catholic bank. Oh. He spent eight years writing a book about the Catholic Church's bank, hmm. and uh, that was absolutely amazing. And, of course, after all that, we do some wrap-up. And uh, one time we raised $42,000 for the Secular Student Alliance over a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, so that was nice. Sometimes we do fundraisers. Uh, last year, about uh, 20 students got to go to the American Atheist Conference for free because we raised money for that. Yeah. So uh, all kinds of things, and it's one of those things that uh, one of the reasons for the show being called The Phil Ferguson Show is because I was terrified of picking a new name because I had two shows before that uh, because you, sometimes you can get tied to your name. So if uh, if my show is called uh, Ten Speed and Gumshoe, uh, yeah. if I talk about something that's not related to bicycles, they, they listeners get upset, but it's called The Phil Ferguson Show, so it's whatever I want to talk about. And if you like it, you come back. If you don't, fuck off. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I like that. That's a yeah. good policy, I think. Um, I want to do a quick side note here. Last week, some of you guys were complaining about the squeaky chair. I know it's squeaking right now. I'm sorry. Uh, we've got to have a solution to that relatively soon. Uh, I know, like, you can pick it up, and I hear it, too. So I'm just letting you know, I know it's there, okay? I'm a big boy. So it's just it's just going to happen. You're just going to have to deal with it, okay? Mine doesn't squeak. Um, Mine yeah, I don't know. I We should have switched. You're just I, doing it wrong. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, guessed. so you, I mean, so, you know, there are there are lots of atheist podcasts now. I've heard that. Uh, yeah, including, I mean, this one also counts in, in a way. I, you know, I'm not. Ex it's not exclusively atheist. But whatever, I, 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 that's the details. But, uh, you know, so, you know, we talk about religion, we talk about all this kind of stuff, but yours is kind of distinct, I think, in that you also talk about money, which yeah. isn't, like, a very common thing that a lot of podcasts of your type do. So, like, why is it that you talk about money? Like, what's the, what's the angle with that? Well, when I was thinking about this new version of podcast, which I've now probably been doing five or six years on top of the four or five years before that, there were two things I wanted to talk about. One was my business, investing, and how to invest. And the other one was atheism and how I think with a secular worldview, we are much more likely to solve some of our global problems. Hmm. Uh, I think that uh, religion is a net negative to our probability of survival as a species hmm. and that we need to fight that and combat that. And I couldn't choose which one to do. So I just said, fuck it, I'll do both. And everyone told me, you can't do that. That's not how podcasts work. And I said, well, I don't care if 10 people listen or 50 people listen. But somehow it ended up being thousands and maybe tens of thousands, depending on how the metrics counted. Yeah. But uh, it's been a huge success. And it's turned out, uh, listeners, if you have a business, marketing to the atheist community is fantastically successful for me. You might want to consider it. Uh, maybe they can put some ads on this show. You know, we'll, we'll hold up a <laughs> sign or something. But... Uh, it has worked great, not because I'm the big fish in the little pond. I'm the only fish. No other financial planner in their right mind markets to atheists. So I have no competition at all in the secular community. Yeah, and that's really interesting. And, and we were kind of talking a little bit before the show about how you didn't expect the number of clients right. that you've gotten since you started this thing. But I guess because it's such a niche kind of thing that, you know, it just kind of happened for you, which is really cool. It's a niche thing, and I think my peak year, I went to 14 different atheist conferences and had tables and did sponsorships. Mm. And people would come up to me and say, so you do investments? I'm like, yeah. They said, well, I have an advisor and he keeps bringing up that I should uh, start a cleansing diet. 
or that I need to go to church more often and I don't want to hear that stuff. Can I hire you? I'm like, uh, sure, sure, you can hire me. So that's kind of how that started to be a symbiotic relationship. The more conferences I went to, and in a weird way, the more evangelical atheist I have become, the more money I've made. Huh. Wow. So that's kind of cool. Man, I wonder, I, uh, you know, you got to be careful with that because people can use that against you if you're not careful, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think I'm past that. Any, <laughs> anyone who doesn't know by now is uh, that living you just, under you just a don't rock. Care. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> that's funny. I just don't care. And, and it, the other thing is that I am a financial planner that swears. Yes. And there are people that think that makes me more... Less credible in some way. More, like, more credible. More credible. Which, by the way, is bullshit. Someone is not more credible because they do or don't swear, but people think that. Yeah, I guess because it's like, oh, you're like the common man. Like, you know, right, yeah, yeah. Right, know, like, like you're, you're the the one guy that that uh, is different. You're the one guy that right. swears. I, I The first time I had this several years ago, a guy said, uh, Phil, I wanted to let you know that I hired you over the other advisor I talked to because you swear. And I said, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and he said, well, I would have expected you to say that as a response. And in a way, some people have said that I'm the anti-Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, Dave well, Ramsey promotes to churches and religious people. Right. Yeah. I okay. promote the secular people. And they're, I thought you were going to say that you're anti-Dave Ramsey because you give bad advice in some way. Yeah. Cause, no, his, you know. his advice has problems, but we won't spend okay. too much time on that. I did a show on that if you want to check out the Phil Ferguson We briefly show. talked about that last time you were on, too, because I was curious. I'd never done any of the Dave yeah. Ramsey courses. But I know people who are like, oh, if you're going to get married, you got to listen to it. So yeah. It, it's a thing. weird thing that sometimes people tell me that they trust me because I'm an atheist. Hmm. And I also do not like that. I mean, yay, and I'm glad that that helps me get some clients, and I'm glad it makes me money, but I'm also trying to be very delicate and not abuse that respect, and I always tell people to inspect, uh, hmm. you know, respect, but inspect, keep your eye on your investments, don't ever put too much trust in any one person. Yeah. You've got to keep an eye out for yourself. That, so. I think that's a pretty good rule for life. That's kind of interesting. But um, just to remind you folks, this is a call-in show. So if you want to call in at the number at the bottom of the screen there, you can go ahead and do that now. We're going to get you some callers in just a bit. Excellent. Um, I can ask, but, answer questions about religion and or money. Religion and or money. Or like if you already had a question you want to ask this week and maybe Phil's not the right guy, just throw it out there. See, yeah. Let's see what happens. Or know? maybe they can ask my opinions on Trump. My opinions are only my own and are not the ACA's opinion.